guys it's Dina your mindset evolutionary here at flynewbeingqueen.com the network for melanated women just like you and me happy Sunday everybody tonight we are going to talk about the power of self-awareness we're going to talk about black inferiority and self-awareness hi welcome to everybody who's joining me I see you guys popping in if you haven't already, please subscribe, please like, and please share this video. Um, whether you are catching me on flynubianqueen.com, um, on Facebook, YouTube, or if you're catching me on the rebroadcast on my personal pages, um, which, are, which is Dina Jacobs on YouTube, um, Dina Jacobs on Instagram, and you can also follow me at Dina Jacobs on Twitter. Um, I'd love to get some messages from you guys in the DMs. Um, hey, Arthur Martin, how's it going? Um, and please text 31996. 31996 to get text alerts and messages. So tonight we are going to talk about black inferiority and self-awareness. Um, we kind of touched on self-awareness a little bit in the last video. And we definitely, this is an ongoing talk about how to overcome or make useful, if that's possible, um, feelings of black inferiority in the community, especially amongst us as women in the black community. Um, one, uh, I was doing a lot of research today and in my research, I started coming across some really amazing uh, uh, black women in history. And I'm going to be quoting Mary McLeod Bethune throughout this. So this is kind of a new thing that I think I'm going to start instituting is having inspirational quotes um, from black women past, present. Um, so let me know how you guys like that and I would really appreciate it. Please give us the thumbs up and if you guys are at all interested um, in supporting me, Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary, um, through a donation, you can do that at Cash App at Dina, D-E-E-N-A Jacobs, J-A-C-O-B-S and any amount is always welcomed and appreciated. It helps me keep this going. So I want to drop this quote in for you guys right now. The true power of a race must be measured by the character of its womanhood. And again, that is Mary McLeod Bethune. And just for some of you guys who may not know, I'm sure most of you do, but may not know that Mary McLeod Bethune was an educator, a philanthropist, and a civil rights leader. She is co-founder of Bethune-Cookman University in Florida which is a historically black university. Um, she advised presidents such as Coolidge, Hoover, and FDR on black issues um, and, was a, and also was invited by one of the presidents to attend the first meeting of the United Nations. And according to the research I did on Wikipedia, she was the only black person from the US that was invited. Um, so looking at her quote again, the, the true power of a race must be measured by the character of its womanhood. So here we are, ladies and some gentlemen. Here we are defining what it means, black womanhood. Um, and we're, we're reflecting and we're becoming self-aware. Who are we in the community? I've posed this question many times as we are here creating codes of conduct um, and kind of deciding who we want to be as black American descendants of slavery, native black Americans, or just plain black Americans, right? Black American women. Who are we? What are we about, right? So last week we kind of started uh, getting a little deeper into self-awareness. So I did post some links there. Hey, Freddie Smith, I'm gonna check in with you guys really quick. Samaria Gregg says, hello, beautiful lady. I said, hey, how's it going? Deanna, Deanna, good. And then Kim Ballas says, great topic, first time listening, continue the good work. Well, thank you for joining. I'm glad to have all of my returning as well as my um, first time people popping in. So let's jump into this. The power of self-awareness. Now I was watching a TED talk. You guys I know know I love to do, you know, video clips, 
Um, I like to get into some written works as well. So this one is The Power of Self-Awareness by William L. Sparks. And I thought out of all the self-awareness videos that I listened to, I felt like his really touched on what we're about at Mindset Evolutionary, what Dina Jacobs is about, because he gets into three major components of self-awareness. What is true self-awareness? Now, what is self-awareness, period? I did take some notes on that. You know we like to get on the same page, right? So, self-awareness. Get to know you so you can grow. Self-awareness is a clear understanding of who you are, your personalities, your behaviors, your beliefs, your motivations, your strengths, and your weaknesses. And now weaknesses might be one of the most important things to know in self-awareness. It's knowing thyself, to thy own self be true. Who am I, Dina Jacobs? Who are you as a black queen or king? Who are we as a community? Community awareness, self-awareness, right? What is the power of self-awareness? Now, according to William L. Sparks, he says that, one, true self-awareness does not comfort. It hurts, disturbs, and disrupts. Especially, I think he's talking about when you're beginning the journey of becoming self-aware, when you're waking up, we. Now, I would love to always hear comments, um, questions. Feel free to jump in and answer that question. Who are you, if you want to answer that? And who are we as a collective of Black women at Fly Moving Queen? Let me see the comments here. So, Sashet L says, this is not the power of our nation, but an attribute. Okay. Can you expand on that a little bit more, Sashet? And then De Deloise Welch says, excellent. Okay, cool. I would love to hear you guys pop in a little bit more. Who are you, right? As if Take a moment and become self-aware. Who am I? How would you define yourself? Throw a couple of things out there. I define myself right now as a mindset evolutionary. And that's someone whose mindset is shifting, evolving, and growing so that I can become the best me. But in becoming the best me and becoming self-aware and going on that journey, let me just be honest that it was not easy. And it is still a process of what I'm going through. And so I will definitely give you, ladies and gentlemen, a lot of love and support around becoming self-aware. But it is one of the most important things that we can do in our community for ourselves as individuals for our families, and for the larger community of what we are out here seeking to do. We're, we have so many things on the agenda, politically, personally, family-wise, spiritually, right? As Black women, we have quite a bit going on. Self-awareness is going to assist us in getting those things accomplished on the personal community and then the national and then global level. Who are we? Who are you? We have to start there. True self-awareness does not comfort. So what we got to do is we got to push past the things we love about ourselves. And those are important. You got to celebrate the things that you love about yourself. But that's easy for most of us, right? The tough part is, what are our weaknesses? What are the things about ourselves that we don't particularly care for? Can we be honest about that? That's the first step. Second, according to William L. Sparks, is true self-awareness requires openness and vulnerability. Now, that is an kind of an, um, a paraphrase that I created from what he's saying. And I'm going to play his clip shortly after we go through the three steps. But the second part of true self-awareness, it requires openness and vulnerability. Now, as women, we have a natural sense of vulnerability as we are receivers, as well as, you know, we do give forth life, but that is after 
we have received. And if we're, and you know what I'm talking about, physical receiving, right? Spiritually, we have a nature of receiving, which is vulnerability. Vulnerability is openness. And that is something that I, you know what, usually I have these things pulled up already. What is vulnerable, the definition of vulnerable? Just to get us on the same page, is an adjective susceptible to physical physical or emotional attack or harm okay now initially that sounds very scary right oh it would be vulnerable um susceptible to physical or emotional attack none of us really want that right but if we get a little deeper into it right okay so another definition is of a partnership liable to higher penalties either by convention or through having one one gain or another okay and this is just google right what is the meaning of vulnerable capable of or susceptible to being wounded or hurt as by a weapon a vulnerable part of the body open to moral attack criticism or temptation etc example is an argument in an argument vulnerable to being refuted or to being um the having some talk back or when you're talking about temptation vulnerable to bribery right if it's a place open to assault it's difficult to defend so let's take two pieces out of that criticism open to criticism that's what i'm talking about when i'm sp speaking about vulnerability and openness right I'm talking about some place where you may feel it's difficult to defend yourself, but I'm not talking about physically. I'm talking about more mentally and spiritually as we get into self-awareness, okay? So the third part is true self-awareness. And again, this is sort of like me paraphrasing what William L. Sparks is saying in his TED Talk on November 14th of 2018. True self-awareness acknowledges and accepts our shadow selves, which leads to personal transformation and breakthroughs. And that's what Mindset Evolutionary is about. Personal transformation, which leads to familial transformation, which leads to communal transformation, or national transformation, and then global transformation and breakthroughs. As Black women in America, we have we're the best at transforming, right? We have all of our black girl magic and our how we look and how we've overcame so many different things. But right now I'm talking about becoming self-aware from the place of where we are right now today and relating this and understanding this on our quest to overcome black inferiority. Now we've already kind of admitted and we looked at some different ways where we have acknowledge that some of us individually as well as in the community as a whole suffer according to dr uh grills share to wedded grills we suffer from and are looking to overcome black inferiority right so here we are self-awareness is required in order for us to overcome this but maybe black inferiority is a part of our shadow self. And if we look at Carl Jung, the, the famous psychologist, right? He has a quote where he says, people will do anything no matter how absurd to avoid facing their own souls. So would you say that there are some ways that we as a community are doing anything, absurd things to not face who we are, our shadow selves, our darker selves? I would say I could definitely see some ways in which we might be doing that as a community. And this goes back to last week's lecture when we were talking about breaking free from stereotypes and freeing ourselves from the angry black woman syndrome. A lot of us feed into that from a, point, a place of pride. Now, I'm not here to judge and say that you should or shouldn't be proud to be an angry black woman. I'm just, I was just saying in that particular video that if that's something that we decide individually or collectively that we no longer want to take 
on as who we are, but maybe it is a part of who we are, right? Presently, as we're working to heal that side of ourselves, so to speak, right? We're looking to break free from those stereotypes and not just simply be an angry black woman, for example, right? We have to be vulnerable and open to that level of criticism about ourselves. Are we angry? Are we loud? Are we hypersexual? Are we Jezebels, so to speak, right? So as I think about these things from a personal perspective, I've had those moments, right? So if I can look at that and I can see where that part of myself could be true, where that part of that accusation could be true, and then from there, I can start to have personal transformation and breakthroughs by acknowledging it and becoming vulnerable and open. It, it does hurt. To confront your shadow self and to become self-aware does hurt because you're going to touch on some of those tender parts inside of yourself. Programming, negative conditioning, things from your childhood, things from the bigger, larger community, uh, outside of the community, the media, the programming that says that Black women can only be one or two ways and that's it. We can only be angry or we can be Jezebels, but we can't be anything else, right? And these are just examples. So I'm looking at this, true self-awareness does not comfort, it hurts, it disturbs, it, dis it disrupts. How many times have you been hurt by someone saying something or projecting something onto you? Why does it hurt? Maybe because there's a part of yourself that believes it. Maybe it's a part of your shadow self. Maybe it's a part of our community shadow self. And this is a very open discussion. Now, I'm not saying I have all the answers, but this is kind of like me coming to you, ladies and gentlemen, to kind of just talk some things out, which is exactly what we need to do in order to decide as a community how we are going to move forward. We're becoming self-aware. So it's not so cut and dry. It's not so easy. These type of discussions require us to tap into our subconscious minds, to make paradigm shifts, right? To shift our perspectives, to change our subconscious minds. It's not easy. It's challenging, but in a good way. It's growth. Remember when you were a child and I remember I used to have groin pains in my legs really bad when I was about 12. And I remember laying in the bed and my legs, my thighs and my calves, especially my shins would be so sore. And I just like, oh my God, my legs hurt so bad. And I was having a growth spurt. And it didn't feel good at the time, but the results on the other end of it was that I got an inch or two taller. And that's something I loved. Or how about when you're sprouting breasts? or the first time that you get your period, right? It doesn't feel good. You're cramping, you're, you know, you have a headache, you feel bloated. There's so many different things going on and now you have blood coming from you. You're like, oh my God, what is this? But on the flip side of it, you're growing into a young woman. You're becoming fertile. You're gaining the ability, a superpower as a woman to be able to house and birth bring forth life so growth is by its very nature painful and so if we can begin to accept that that is a level of vulnerability the acceptance is a level of vulnerability to understand that it is okay it is okay to be vulnerable when you are on the path to personal transformation, mindset evolution, breakthroughs, and growth. And as a community, we have to understand that there is going to be some pain in this process of growth towards claiming our thrones. 
And if we understand that and we 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 look at it from a place of love and we look at it a place of self-love, most importantly, that I love myself, that you love yourself, that we as a community love and embrace the growing pains that we are going through right now. We understand that by having a greater sense of self-awareness. Right. We have to acknowledge and accept our shadow self. And we have a shadow self right now in a belief from my perspective of black inferiority. And that's what we are here to move past. So let me see what you, ladies and gentlemen, are commenting here in the comment section. But before I do that, I want to say thank you so much for joining me, Dina Jacobs, your mindset evolutionary here on FlyNubianQueen.com on Facebook and YouTube, Instagram. I think we have a Twitter page, if I'm not mistaken. And we do have, we are now on iTunes. Thank you so much. If you haven't already, please right now, give us the thumbs up, like, subscribe, share, give us the hearts if you love this type of talks where we can lovingly transform ourselves, where we can lovingly evolve our mindsets and free and heal ourselves. I am here to provide a space of love. So I want you guys to, if you haven't already, get your money right, flynubianmoney.com. And if you have a business idea, go to flynubianbusiness.com and text the words queens to 31996 so you can get text alerts and updates. Now let's see what your comments are so far. Thank you for your comments. Bianca Johnson says, hello everyone from New York. Hi, hey, New York in the house. Bianca Johnson says, I don't feel inferior. I'm glad. I'm really happy to hear that because I don't feel inferior either. However, I do know when I really step back and look at myself and think that, you know, sometimes I have thought inferior type of thoughts or thought that other people thought that I was inferior because I'm black. And according to Carl Jung, that would potentially be a projection that somewhere inside me I feel possibly inferior as a black woman. And I love what Dr. Tawede Grill says in one of her videos, if you go back a couple videos ago where I talk about emotional emancipation, she speaks about how she was able to become self-aware in a moment where she, you know, she's an activist, she's fighting for the community, and she caught herself on the way to Ferguson to be a part of that movement, she saw a black female pilot and she immediately got scared about getting on the plane with her. And it's because she was like, wait a minute, I'm used to, you know, this white man, you know, being a pilot and I'm looking at this little black woman and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. And she caught herself. It was, it happened so fast, but she was able to become self-aware in that moment and see the shadow self of projecting an idea of less than, of inferiority onto this black woman who was clearly qualified. Otherwise, why would she even be a pilot? She passed all the tests, took all the classes, correct? And got the job, right? So she caught herself in that moment. And that's what I'm bringing to you, ladies and gentlemen, how we can catch ourselves, how we can become self-aware. So in those moments, we can acknowledge and we can sit with that and we can understand it and we can embrace it and we can start to grow from it. We can start to grow from it. How do we move beyond that as individuals and as a collective community? Let's get a little bit deeper. Thank you for your comment, Bianca. Bianca says, true for you. Okay. <laughs> uh, Slick Rick Talbert says, great topic. St. Thomas here. Oh, great. I'm so glad to have some Caribbean folks in the house. Lila Brown says, hey, sis. Hello, beautiful. Bianca Johnson says, what? Sorry, you are what you think you are. Absolutely. And sometimes we have thoughts that are so deep inside of us, right? That we're not even conscious of them. And that's why I talk to you frequently about shifting and changing the subconscious mind. Because a lot of this stuff, as, as people who live in America, we understand the systems that, in play, that are in place. We also know our history. And we know that certain things have come to us, not by our own doing, but it's almost insidious. That means it's in the air, it's in the ether. We have little imagery 
and subtle things that are going on and being said about us as black women, us as a black community, as black people, all throughout the day from the time we are born until the time that we die. So sometimes we don't even realize and that's why I'm bringing this to you about how to become self-aware and understanding that becoming self-aware does hurt. And I feel like that's kind of what we're going through right now as a community, as we are waking up politically, as we are waking up, um, you know, to our own cultural cultural shifts, right? As we are waking up to the racism that still exists in society, as we are waking up to our power, and our abilities to make shifts and changes as we are waking up to our own hand in it, if we are completely honest, that hurts. That is not something that feels good. It doesn't feel good to look in the mirror sometimes and catch yourself saying, oh my God, look at my thighs. Oh my God, look at my hair. Oh my God, Ugh, you're just so dumb. Oh my God, why are you so lazy? That's the type of stuff I'm talking about, becoming self-aware of not only the amazing things, because that's a little bit easier, typically easier for us to do, right? We know that we're amazing, but how can we look at ourselves critically and be open and vulnerable to that hurt part of ourselves where it's like, maybe this side of me is not the best type of person. Maybe I'm feeding into the stereotypes. Maybe I am sabotaging myself in different ways. And it's not always race specific, right? So thank you for bringing that up, Bianca. Lila Brown, we have to detach from those who are not in alignment. We have to detach from those who are not in alignment. I totally get with what you're saying, but what if the person who's not in alignment is you, is your shadow, shadow self? Let's get back into that and I can stop ranting. <laughs> so thank you for pulling me out of that, Lila. Li oh, Lila has more comments. Out of free will choice and says that's duality and she put the yin and the yang, the dark and the light. Their, their inferiority complex has been superimposed upon us. They threw their energy on us. Now, you know that I support that statement in a lot of ways. It is a belief that I have. Um, it may be right. It may be wrong. But I do share that belief with you, Lila. Um, I do feel like a lot of the things that have been programmed in our society through the media, through the, 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 the history, the omissions, as well as the um, embellishments of historical texts, et cetera. Those things um, have definitely, I feel like there's definitely an inferiority complex that has been superimposed using Lila Brown's word. Um, they threw it onto us. Now, since we have caught that energy and in a lot of ways own that energy, right? That has become our shadow self. So let's get a little bit deeper into what is a shadow self. The shadow self, according to Google, the shadow self, the shadow is the side of your personality that contains all the parts of yourself that you don't want to admit to having. It is at first an unconscious side. It is only through effort to become self-aware that we recognize our shadow. So that's what we're going to do. That's what we're doing right now tonight is we are recognizing our shadow. So for those of you who are here, who are here let's get into it. What are our shadow selves? Now for me, I have a spirit of laziness sometimes, right? I also have a spirit of, from time to time, I can have a, a spirit of um, stinginess, right? And so I project that onto other people sometimes like, oh, you know, this person's being stingy or I'm not getting what I want out of this situation. That's how I can manifest that. Why am I not getting the things that I want? Well, I'm not getting the things that I want because there's a part of me, the shadow self, that is very stingy and not giving in certain ways, right? Now, you guys see me here, you may not know that about me. You might think that I'm a very giving person because I'm very open and I'm, you know, I'm doing this type of work. However, I'm, I'm telling you that to allow you to know that I can be emotionally stingy. I can be... Um, 
sometimes materially stingy. Um, sometimes I can be a little bit of a like miser about certain things. This is me. This is who I am. But I also do things to push myself forward, such as what I'm doing here, and, and be giving and be open. It's easier for me to be giving and open, more open with women than it is with men in certain instances, right? So that's also a shadow side of myself because I wanna be in a relationship, but I sometimes can do things to withhold in relationships, which causes the breakdown of the relationships. So these are things that I'm working on. These are parts of my shadow self. And it has been some tough work. Like I, it has been some really hard and challenging work. Therapy, um, reading, meditating in order for me to continue to grow and transform as a woman, as a human being. And that's what I'm challenging you to do individually and for us as a community to take a look at what are our shadow sides. I would say our shadow side might be some of our ratchetness, right? Because there's some of us who really revel in the ratchetness, but then there's some of us who are embarrassed and ashamed of the ratchetness. So the shadow is the side of your personality personality that contains all the parts of yourself that you don't want to admit to having. So what are some of the parts of ourselves as a community of women that we don't want to admit to having that sometimes we can unconsciously do? I know I have unconsciously caught myself shucking and jiving. I kind of talked about this in the last video. Um, cooning, I've done it. It's happened in certain situations and I catch myself and I'm like, oh my God, I'm humiliated in the moment that I have caught myself shifting into some stereotypical role for the appeasement of others, if you know what I mean, um, to make others feel more comfortable. And so I've become more aware of that and I've, I've kind of been good with myself and saying that, you know what, it's okay, you're not perfect. This is a side of who you are. And you don't have to perform for these people and you don't have to tap into that. But if there are moments that you catch yourself in that, you can self-correct, you can shift, you can acknowledge that side of yourself. The worst thing you could do with that is just completely deny it. And I'll get into that a little bit more now. So your shadow self, I got this information from your shadow self. What is it and how can it help you? Um, at the Harley Therapy page, and this is out of the UK, um, it's called Harley Therapy, and I think it's a group of therapists and counseling center. So they published this on September 7th of 2017. The shadow is what you perceive as dark and weak about yourself. What do we as a community perceive as dark and weak about ourselves? We're not, uh, some of the things I have heard online is that we don't stick together. We are always infighting and competitive, so we don't have a strong sense of community. Um, there's a breakdown in the family. Our men are seen as weak, whereas our women are seen as strong. Gender role reversal. These are some of the things that I've heard people discuss online. Um, is it true? Let me hear from you guys. Is it true? Bianca Johnson says, maybe you're just frugal. <laughs> Yes, but I want to live an abundant life. So Bianca, that shadow self sometimes can be that anchor that is just dragging you, that ball and chain. If you want to, if you're li trying to live an abundant life, and then when I take a look at my life, sometimes I'm like, hmm, that might be why I'm lacking abundance in certain areas. It's because I'm not acknowledging this shadow self. Instead, I'm projecting it on to others when I need to become more abundant. And um, and understand that, yes, yeah, sometimes it's okay to be frugal. Absolutely. And instead of being ashamed, see, what we want to do is we want to detach emotion. And I talk about this all the time, is we want to create the psychological space to observe that side of myself of being stingy without judgment or emotion. Because you see, the shame and the guilt that we attach to our view of the shadow self, the judgment of the shadow self is what causes us to get weighed down by it and then project it. 
It's almost like a snapback, in my opinion. When we're judging it and we're pushing it down and we're like, look at her, she's ratchet, she's ghetto, she's a, he's a coon, he's a, and we're doing all that, we're projecting out, we're, we're pulling back and a poof, right? And we're putting that energy out there and what is it doing? It's producing more of it. It's causing more infighting. It's causing more um, for us to not have any sense of community because we're feeling judged by one another. So what I'm doing is I'm trying to create some psychological space for us to detach our emotion of shame and guilt. They're very, very heavy. We should not be ashamed of our past and we should not feel guilty of times when we have given in to our shadow selves. What we want to do is create the space to understand that that is part of who we are and then shift our focus away from the shadow after we have acknowledged it and shift it on to, okay, now that I'm aware of that, what do I want to do that counters that? What do I want to do to move myself forward and not be weighed down by the shadow self? I hope this is making some sense because I tell you guys, I am coming to you and I'm working through these things with you. I'm not the authority. I'm just here to help. Uh, guide us through a conversation and I definitely want you guys to be a part of it. So let's get a little deeper. The shadow self is what you perceive as dark and weak about yourself. Now notice the word perceive because sometimes we're perceiving things as weakness and I think Bianca uh, Johnson brought this up beautifully. Maybe I'm looking at myself as being stingy but maybe I can say hey you know what Maybe I'm not being stingy. Maybe I am being frugal. And how do I feel about being frugal? Now, I particularly do not like the word frugal. And that's just a personal thing because, again, I am into abundance. So then I guess, you know, again, I'm creating psychological space. So I'm starting to reframe my shadow self to say, what can I do and how can I look at this in such a way that my greatest weaknesses become my biggest strengths, my springboards into where I want to be and becoming the person, my, my breakthrough, my personal transformation. Because everything that God gives us is a gift. Everything that you have been bestowed with on this earth is a gift. I know some of it seems horrible, Absolutely, some of it is very damaging. But if you look at those people who have achieved great things in life, and one of them, for example, I want to bring forward is Katherine Johnson. I know you guys have all seen Hidden Figures. Katherine Johnson was a physicist and a mathematician for NASA. She was played by Taraji P. Henson. Katherine says that while racial and gender barriers were always there, she ignored them. She had done the work and knew that she belonged there. That's how she handled the shadow self of the inferiority because you know those people were putting inferiority all over her, projecting as Lila Brown so eloqu eloquently stated. They were projecting their own inferiority. Here's this beautiful brainiac of a black woman. She's smart. She's beautiful. She's walking in there with confidence. And you know they are projecting their inferiority onto her. Who is this black woman coming in here? First of all, she's black. Then she's a woman trying to put that quote unquote double negative onto her. And what did she say? Katherine Johnson says that while racial and gender barriers were always there, she ignored them. She did not give any energy to that shadow self, meaning that she says she, the racial and gender barriers were there. So she acknowledged on a certain level but she created psychological space around it and didn't attach any emotion to it, any guilt or any shame. She did not feed into the shadow of black inferiority. And she said what she did was, okay, I see you. Now I'm turning my head over here and I'm going to get these math problems fi finished so that we can launch off into space. That's what I'm getting ready to do. So later for that, um, let me finish up my math problems right? She had done the work. 
So she didn't let that distract her. It's okay, it's over there. Racism is there. Sexism is there. But she's not going to be distracted. She's going to stay focused because she'd done the work and she knew that she belonged there. Now, where do we belong as a community? We belong on our thrones. We belong in command of this great nation that our ancestors built and that we continue to run. That's where we belong. We have done the work and it is time for us to receive. However, as individuals and as a collective community in the present, there is still some work to be done. And so that's what we're talking about now. So let's get a little bit deeper into it. I hope Katherine Johnson and Mary McLeod Bethune are inspiring you guys because these are some of our greatest, like these are our sheroes as they call them. And um, I want to start doing this. I hope you guys like it. Let me know what you think about me bringing in some quotes from real life black women who have had mindset evolutions. They're mindset evolutionaries in my book because they broke through all kinds of barriers and let nothing hold them back to achieve great things in this world. And so um, I want us to know that each and every one of us is great in our own way. And through this mindset evolution, we are going to take, like, think about this. Katherine Johnson and the other couple of black women that were there, they were, can you imagine being in segregation in America with a bunch of white men around you? They're supposed to be the smart ones in the room. And you know, back then they could easily have lynched her. They could have poisoned her anything and nobody would have did a day on thing about it. You could have been out of there. How courageous these women had to be and how confident and self-assured and how calm they had to remain under these circumstances because they had purpose, they had focus, and most importantly, they had a lot of self-love. In order for you to have that level of confidence and calm, you have to have a lot of self-love that you know who you are and no one can take that away from you. So that's what we're working on. I'm working on it right along with you. Okay, so again, from Harley Therapy. So while for one person, their shadow might just contain such classic elements as sadness, rage, laziness, and cruelty, you might also hide your personal power, your independence, and your emotional sensitivity. And can I say as Black women, sometimes we hide in the greater society our personal power behind rage, behind some laziness, behind some ratchetness, right? I have seen women who are super smart women. Like, I would say, for example, <laughs> I know you guys are probably going to be like, what? I think that Black China is, is low-key a genius <laughs> for a few different reasons. I think that she uses and plays into her shadow self um, with the whole persona of who she is. And she has taken the formula that the Kardashians have put forward and she has flipped it and reversed it and made it into something where she could take ownership of it and made it into a brand. I mean, to me, this woman, I know some people probably don't agree with the way she did it, but for who she was and the background that she came from and from my understanding of it, the stripper world, um, I think her mom might have been in that world as well. I'm not 100% sure. Please correct me if I'm wrong. But you think about somebody coming from that type of background and then becoming a reality star, a household name, a brand, and she was able to like flip the Kardashian game back on them with the whole Rob situation. And now she has a baby by one of the Kardashians, the same thing that the Kardashian women were doing to our men. It's a little bit of a genius thing. And I think she was able to take her personal power and use that weakness, quote unquote weakness of being seen as a ratchet, dumb hood rat and get her businesses going and get her brand going and keep herself relevant. And now this this woman, we don't even know how much this woman is really truly worth. I think she's very smart because she, remember when she went, remember when she made Rob upset and he was like going online and putting naked pictures of her and, and like just going crazy and, doing revenge porn and all that stuff against her and she got herself on good morning america one of the morning shows and got to working them uh quote unquote what we call white girl tears so she had some black girl tears and was like i can't believe he did this to me this girl used to be a stripper i mean 
to me, that is uh, some entertainment brilliance right there. That is some brilliance, flipping the game on its head. And that's what we're talking about is using that shadow self that we have to propel us to achieve our goals. Now, of course, we may not have as a community or as individuals the same type of goals that Black China has. However, that's just an example of how she propelled herself to become a household name and at that particular moment, a spokeswoman for the Me Too um, movement and how she gained sympathy from the wider public, which then gave her access to more opportunities to make money and build her brand and secure the future for her children. Let's just keep it real. Let's just keep it real, all while still gaining some revenge on the Kardashians who, uh, you know, we know that story that sold her baby daddy. So <laughs> anyway, that's just a little fun sort of example um, to illustrate something very serious that we're talking about. So I hope you guys gained a little levity from that. Um, but yeah, the shadow self is what you perceive as dark and weak about yourself and therefore needing to be hidden or denied. So instead of her hiding and denying who she is, she was able to take that part of herself, create that psychological space, and think clearly in that moment of how it can be useful for her to gain and get ahead on her personal and professional goals. That's what we're talking about here. That's just an example, and I just picked that as ratchetness, right? But this depends on your own perspective on life and your levels of self-esteem. Now, to me, a woman like her has to have a very high uh, sense of self-esteem in order to be able to make the moves that she makes. Because if you don't have self-esteem, you are going to be hiding in shame. Like, oh, my God, he put the naked pictures of me. Oh, la, 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 la. You're not going to be able to think clearly. If someone exposes your past, you're going to be like, oh, my God, what? oh, my God. Or if something comes up, oh, you act like a coon or whatever, whatever you were doing, you were arguing, you, you, whatever, whatever the case may be. It's your perception of what the things are that are dark and weak. So you got to get comfortable with the things that you perceive. We as black women, we perceive as dark, as weak about ourselves. Some of us are feeling some kind of way about our skin, our melanin. Our melanin is our superpower. And that is going to be a talk that I'm going to go through with you ladies at a later date. But anyone who's feeling something about colorism, your weakness, perceived weakness, your perceived darkness is one of your strengths. It's a springboard. You don't spend a lot of time there. As Katherine Johnson says, you ignore, I don't want to say ignore it completely. You acknowledge it like it's there, but then you stay focused on where you're trying to get, right? You give it the psychological space that it needs where you can examine it and say, is this holding me back in some kind of way? And if it is, what do I need to do to unloose the hook and realize that I'm human? I have flaws, but I'm not going to allow those flaws to get in my way. I'm going to see how they can be useful to me as an individual, as a black woman. And then also how we can use their stereotype projections against them because it can be done. And I'm not saying I have the answer for that, but I know I see people out here using strategy all day long and Black China is just a fun celebrity gossip example but let's start thinking about this how can we use them thinking right they don't suspect us to be the smart people in the room they don't sus uh, suspect us to be the people making power moves behind the scenes i think we could be using that to our advantage what do you think they expect us to have low self-esteem and be ratchet don't they but we don't have to necessarily feed into that Right. But we can acknowledge that it exists and then ignore it by staying focused on our personal and community transformations and breakthroughs and the goals that we are here to get. So, again, I would say when certain things happen in the media, they always want to have something come out. We're trying to move forward politically or we're talking about reparations or, or whatever, whatever it is that we're doing. We're, we're starting to get together as a community. What happens next thing you know, somebody says some racial something. 
And now we're all focused on that. He said, what? Nappy-headed hoes, niggas, what? I know they did, and here we all are on black Twitter. Da, da, da. That's the shadow self. That is the shadow self being activated and triggered because we're perceiving and we're feeding into that emotionally. But if we take a moment and we look at it and we say, oh, okay, another white person said something racist. Okay. Maybe her edges weren't slicked down that day. So what? Anyway, I'm saying focused over here with these different things that are going on. That's them and they don't control my life. That's kind of what I'm getting at here. Self-awareness how we become aware of how we can feed, how we are feeding into some of the shadow things that are being projected onto us from the larger community. Let me get a little deeper here. We cannot delete our shadow self according to Harley therapy. We cannot delete our shadow self or heal it according to what they're saying. They suggest that one must yield its gifts of insight and personal power. And that's what I was just talking about. Yield its gifts, right? We have to glean, we have to pull the gifts out of it, the insight that it gives us into them. When someone says something racist on TV, that is insight that we have into them. That is one of their weaknesses. As Lila Brown put it, projecting their fear of inferiority onto us as a community. That's an insight. Use it. Also, it gives us personal power because now, because we are self-aware and we understand and know who we are as queens, brilliantly beautiful, gifted beings, black women, we know who we are, right? So we're self-aware. So when the shadow is projected, we can see what they're saying and we can be like, maybe I could have slicked down my edges, but I'm not taking it personal because I know I am still beautiful and I'm still a queen. Now, these are very lighthearted examples, but I think you guys get the point, or at least I hope you do. So let me check in with the comments. And see what you think. Okay, um, let's see. Lila Brown says, learning to embrace your shadow self, being united with all that I am. Yes, and you are a queen, honey. I see you doing your thing over there with your organization. And that's exactly it. Somebody probably could be like, oh, you you a black girl in Hollywood trying to have this talent management? Who, who do you think you are? Like, What is going on? And you did it. You didn't let any of that stop you. That's exactly what we're talking about here. And I commend you for that. And if you want to share how you did that, we would love to hear that. That's the type of stories we need. Bianca Johnson says, I don't want to give my money to everyone either. Baby girl, I feel you. You got to, you know. Lila Brown, shadow self, the strong black woman stereotype. Yes, I touched on that last week with the angry black woman and the strong black woman. Um, so if you go to flynubianqueen.com on Facebook, click videos, you will see a playlist. And then you can click on the Dina Jacobs playlist. Um, I think it might be the only playlist that's up right now. And you can click on last week's video, which is um, Breaking Through Stereotypes, The Angry Black Woman. But maybe it's a defense mechanism. It has been a defense mechanism. Yes, Lila Brown. Quinn Micah says yes. Um, Bianca Johnson says exactly. They are there every day. We can't let that stop me. I'm not inferior. You're not. You're a queen. You're a black woman. You, your people built this place. Of course you're not inferior. Why would they pick inferior people to come and build a country, which ended up being the greatest country in the world right now? Lila Brown, Katherine Johnson, my sorority sister, highly inspirational. She had inner resolve. She had not only inner resolve, Lila, she was resilient. And again, I did a video on black women and resiliency, and I want to touch on that. I will touch on that in another video where I give specific examples such as Katherine Johnson. Yes, your soror is so inspirational and amazing that they made a film about her in Hollywood, and she was played by Taraji P. Henson, right? Taraji plays a lot of angry black women, but through Katherine Johnson's story, she gave 
Taraji, her story gave Taraji the opportunity to play something beyond that to show the many different sides of her talent range. And she was awarded for it. Um, Lila Brown, I work in a male dominated industry too, like Katherine Johnson Sports. I didn't see the movie, but I can understand her quote to ignore them. Girl, you gotta watch that movie. That's one of those that should be on your movie night, you know? Your puff puff and uh I forgot what you were gonna call it, but that's that would be a good one to put on the list. Lila Brown says that's a superpower transmutation. Girl, that's the word right there. Transmutation. I didn't want to bring it all up in here today, but I'm definitely doing a video on transmutation. Again, this is Dina Jacobs, live, your mindset evolutionary here at FlyNubianQueen.com, the network for melanated women just like you and me. I'm so glad you guys are joining me here every Sunday at 7 p.m. Please, if you love what we're talking about here and you love what I do and would like to support me, you can cash at me at Dina Jacobs, D-E-E-N-A-J-A-C-O-B-S. You can follow me on Instagram, Dina Jacobs, and Twitter, Dina Jacobs, and also YouTube, Dina Jacobs. Um, please feel free to follow me on all my platforms. Um, I will be reposting these videos on my different um, social media outlets. And you can DM me on Instagram if you have any ideas about um, any topics you would like for me to discuss or you just want to say hi. I love you guys so much. Um, Bianca Johnson, LOL, that's what we're talking about. Um, Lila Brown says, strippers don't even have feelings. Black China finessed them. She did that. Girl, yes, you put your little like high five hands up. Didn't she, though? But that's what I'm talking about. Like, instead of tearing each other down and being like, oh, Black China, she's so ratchet, learn from certain people. Now, we may not agree with the way by which they're doing it. That may not be your path. But what we want to do is we want to look at those who have overcame because they don't always come in that beautiful package of how Katherine Johnson is, you know, she's a math genius. She's a physics genius. They would not, you look at what Elon Musk is doing today. You look at what was done back in the 60s, SpaceX today. We look at NASA back then going to the moon orbiting the earth, none of that would have been done without this brilliant mind of this black woman. And how is she telling you she did it? She is saying she knew that racial and gender bias barriers were always there. She ignored them. She had done the work and knew she belonged there. And we, as a community of women, can say, we have done the work. Our ancestors did the work, and we belong here. Now cut the check. Now cut the check, okay? It's about finessing, okay? We get, we're not out here fighting. We're, I'm not about to get out here and start fighting these people. It's about finessing the situation by understanding your shadow and then understanding your shadow and becoming self-aware. Here is the biggest payoff of becoming self-aware and have personal transformations and breakthroughs. It increases your emotional intelligence which again, I have spoken about in other videos. And by increasing your emotional intelligence, you can read situations and read rooms and you can boom, see their shadow self. And when you understand their weaknesses and when you understand how they're perceiving themselves and trying to project onto you, you could be like the matrix and just dodging it. Boom, 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 boom. they can't even touch you. And then you know what buttons to push and how to play them and what moves to make on this chessboard, ladies. We're women. We can finesse. We don't have to get out here and be fighting hard like men. We can work on ourselves. We can grow. We can evolve. We can become vulnerable in a healthy way to become self-aware, acknowledge ourself, our shadow self, kind of become cool with it, but don't let it distract us. We can stay focused. And that's what I'm getting at is how we break past all the feelings of inferiority that are being projected onto us, right? How we break free of the stereotypes by acknowledging that stereotypes exist, but they are projections. We don't have to own them and we don't have to put emotion into them. Every time somebody gives us a side eye or comments on our hair, or we don't have to take that on. 
We have gorgeous hair. We have beautiful hair. We have hair. We wear hair all kinds of ways. We put wigs on. We put weave in. We braid it. We straighten it. We coil it. We put our products in. We wear the afros. We put braids. We do everything. Of course, it's amazing. Of course, people are going to be want to acknowledge it and touch it and stuff like that. Don't put emotion into it. It doesn't mean you have to let them touch you now if you don't want to be touched. But what I'm saying is you don't have to get upset and angry all the time. That's a part of our shadow self, us not being comfortable with that part of ourself that we perceive as others finding unattractive, for example. And again, these are just examples, right? So let's get a little bit deeper with Carl Jung here. Now, you know, Carl Jung, which is spelled J-U-N-G, Carl Jung is a famous psychologist. And he says the term the shadow was made popular by him. He saw it as the uncivilized, even primitive side of our nature as human beings. He believed that we needed to fully see this dark side of ourselves if we were to be fully integrated humans. Now, Young didn't feel it was just individuals who had shadows. He also talked of the collective shadow. And that's what I'm touching on here. So I jumped ahead a little bit. But again, Young didn't feel it was just individuals who had shadows. He also spoke of the collective shadow. And that's what I'm touching on here, ladies. We as a community of women in America, Black women, have a collective shadow. And that's what we're touching on. And that's what Dr. Chiwete Grills is saying. We have to emotionally emancipate ourselves by becoming self-aware and facing our shadow as a community and acknowledging our shadow and saying, all right, we see you, we know you're there, but you don't control us, that's why it's a shadow. Who controls the shadow when you're outside? The shadow moves when you move, right? The shadow, depending on where you're standing in the light and where you're standing in the light, like you can see my shadow right here. It's not very well defined because I'm, stand, I'm right by the light. I'm facing the light. The shadow is behind me. I control the movements of my shadow. And we as a community need to get in control of the movements of our shadow. No one else should be in control of when our shadow emerges but us. And when it does emerge, as shadows often do, because you know that the higher the light is, the more defined your shadow is. The brighter the light is, the more defined your shadow is. And, you, and we need to be okay with that. Okay? So, again... True self-awareness requires openness and vulnerability. And another quote from Mary McLeod Bethune is, be calm, be steadfast, be courageous. And I give you that, ladies. I give you that right now when we are doing this work, when you are confronting your shadow self. I would like for you guys to do some homework with this. Click on the link that I put there in the video. Again, the article is Your Shadow Self, What It Is and How It Can Help You. Notice that they title it, How Can Your Shadow Self Help You? This is strategy in this game that we're in, in this fight that we're in, in this effort to reclaim our throne, what we built. We're talking about, hey, cut the check, right? We want our reparations. We want our land right? We have to know how every aspect of who we are as individuals and as a community, how we can use that to help us in gaining and achieving and fulfilling who we are, our destiny. So let's see. I do, I do want to play that little video clip right here at the last part, and let William L. Sparks speak to you on this in his own words. So he's going to go through the steps of self-awareness, okay? The power of it. The, the kind of self-awareness I'm talking about, true self-awareness, hurts. It does not comfort. It disturbs and it disrupts, and that's why we avoid it. 
That's why we stay in the shallow end of the validate me, play to my strengths, self-awareness pool. But if you truly want to grow and develop and enhance your self-awareness, I believe you have to be willing to go to the deep end. So it does discomfort and disrupt, but it's in that disruption that we're afforded an opportunity for true growth and development. It is in that disruption. It is in that moment of pain, that little sting when somebody makes a racist comment or something like that, that gives us the opportunity to grow. We don't have to live there in that pain, ladies. That's what I'm saying. We can give ourselves permission to feel and acknowledge that pain. You know, yeah, of course, absolutely. Like, ow, that hurt. Ooh, okay. Hmm. But I'm going to stay focused. I love myself and I'm going to take care of that little pain, but I'm not going to attach to it and I'm not going to live in that pain. But understand, becoming self-aware as a community, and I think that's happening to us now, is as we're becoming more self-aware, some of the things that we're seeing, they hurt. The second takeaway that I have from this conversation uh, that I try to apply is that we have a moral obligation, I believe, to give constructive developmental feedback to those in our lives. That's what we're doing here. I believe, I agree with him when I heard him say that. Now, I changed the um, the breakdown of how I gave it to you ladies because I wanted to make sure that um, I gave you some very clear one, two, three steps at the beginning about what self-awareness is. But what he's saying here to me is so important. We as women, as black women in America, we as black women in the community, of black women, we as black women in the nation, in our families and in the world. We know that a lot of people look to us as black women here in America for our styles, our, our even our intellect. We have led movements, we have started movements that now we're not even, you know, we ended up getting kicked out of. <laughs> Tamika Mallory and some of the others, I mean, you know, we can go back and look all through history and see where things like that have happened, right? However, it is a moral obligation for us to give developmental feedback to each other. And we have to get better about receiving this. And it goes back to the first part with that he was saying. True self-awareness does not comfort. It disturbs. It hurts. It disrupts. But we have to be able to say things from a place of love and receive from a place of love, too. Constructive feedback, and you know, it just doesn't feel good. I mean, even though if we're like we create that emotional space and don't take it quote unquote personally, meaning don't get emotional about it, and you might get emotional for a minute, okay, that it happens, but you don't live in that emotion uh, from the feedback. That's where you can grow because you can say, okay, somebody's hmm, somebody's seeing me like that. Or as a community, we could say, okay, they're seeing us that way. All right, it doesn't feel good. That hurts. I don't like it that they're seeing us as a bunch of ratchet hoes. All right, um, I'm going to acknowledge that that hurts and I don't like it. However, is there a place that they could be right about that? And if there is, what are the pros and cons of that? Do you see what I'm saying? This is strategic. What are the pros and cons of somebody thinking that I'm stingy? What are the pros and cons of wearing my own natural hair versus wearing a unit? And then you can start to say, okay, okay, all right. I accept that part of myself. I accept that mistake I made. I accept that maybe I did this and it wasn't in my best interest. We as a community can accept that maybe we did some things that weren't in our best interest as a community. Okay, so now what? We as a community, we're talking about cohesion, we have a moral obligation to give de developmental feedback to each other. 
and we have to be okay and open and vulnerable to receive that with love and to give that with love. But understand that when someone really cares about you and they're trying to give you some feedback, it hurts. It, we want to be perfect, but I mean, come on, we're human. We're not. And it's okay. <laughs> and so often, and I'm guilty of doing this too, we don't. We sugarcoat the truth or we avoid it outright. We don't want to see that person's reaction. They won't be able to handle that. They're going to get angry at me. We have all of these excuses to self-censor the feedback that could be their F and life story and a turning point for them. So I actually believe we have a moral obligation to provide constructive feedback to others. I agree with them. I think in our community, we have a moral obligation to give constructive feedback. Again, you know, I always talk about Gen Z, millennials. We owe it to them. We owe it to them to give them some constructive feedback with love, to boost them in the areas where they are doing great, but also support them in the areas through constructive, loving, constructive feedback, and also receiving loving, constructive feedback from them, because I'm sure there's some things that we're doing that they're like, why are mama and auntie and them, why are they doing that? That's weird. You know, receive that feedback. We need to be open and vulnerable to receive that feedback from our children, from our, our younger generation. We have to open up these conversations, ladies. We cannot always be like, I don't want to hear that. I know he's talking to me. I'm not, what? Talk, whatever. We can't always be that way. We have to be open. We have a moral obligation in order to really move this forward. And not care a little bit less about how they react to it and care a little bit more about this obligation that we have. The third takeaway I have from this, I believe that personal transformation Transformation, not incremental improvement, but transformation can only occur when we have the courage to face our own shadow. And that's where, you know, we started and that's where we're pretty much going to end because we're, you know, this is an ongoing conversation. Personal trans transformation occurs when we have the courage to face our own shadow. And so, again, Mary McLeod Bethune says, be calm, be steadfast, be courageous in facing your shadow. Now, this is personal work that you, that you ladies have to do, and it's ongoing. So let me check your comments before I get out of here because we're running a little bit over time tonight. Um, let's see. Bianca Johnson. Oh, she's talking about Black Shanna still. <laughs> yeah, she used what her mama gave her. That's for sure. Um, Lila Brown says their rejection is our protection. I can definitely see that. And see, that's why it's good to have these conversations because we start to brainstorm on ways that we can use the weaknesses that we have, identify our weaknesses, identify our soft spots, identify the hurts. We can kind of acknowledge them, deal with them, create that psychological space. And then we can reflect and look back and say, now, how does that tell us about them and what their weaknesses are? What are their weaknesses? What are they projecting onto us as their shadow self, from their shadow selves? Bianca Johnson, but we also do it in ourselves and that's how they get over. Exactly. So this is, this is exactly what we're talking about, how we are projecting on each other, how they've projected on us, how we're projecting on each other, but how we need to be open to each other's um, constructive feedback. And sometimes it doesn't feel good. But whenever someone comes to, to say something to you and it doesn't feel good, you don't have to take it on. But what you should do is have a moment of reflection to self-check and say, is there any truth into what this person is saying? Maybe they didn't say it in the best way, but is there any truth? And then how can I use that? Sounds super manipulative and <clears throat> kind of a little bit like an evil genius. And maybe it is. Maybe that's what we need to be a little bit of, you know? But we can still infuse it with feminine love. Right. We can still be very feminine about how we do things and we can still be very loving. Right. Larry Brown. Hey, Queen. Larry Brown in the house from Houston, Texas. All right. So I think that's the end of the comments. So, again, if you haven't already, please like, please subscribe, 
please share. I'm so glad that you ladies are joining me here every Sunday night at FlyMovieAndQueen.com, the network for melanated women, just like you and me on YouTube and Facebook. And also, please go to the different social media platforms I have at Dina Jacobs on YouTube. I do have a personal page, and you can see some of my older work as well as some of my new work there. Dina Jacobs on Instagram and Twitter. Um, and please DM me anytime. And if you haven't already, please go check out flymovieandmoney.com. Uh, get your money up and understand your finances. Get your financial house in order, ladies. Also, if you have a business idea, which I know each and every one of us has a great business idea because we are very resourceful women, uh, please go to flymovieandbusiness.com and learn how to start a business. And if you'd like to support, support Fly Movie and Queen, you can definitely go to shop fnq.com and get some merch and if you want to support dina jacobs you can go to cash app and send me a donation and it is at d-e-e-n-a j-a-c-o-b-s that's d-e-e-n-a j-a-c-o-b-s dina jacobs i appreciate you ladies so much thank you so much for being here my brilliantly beautiful gifted beings my black queens I love you guys so much and I hope you have a wonderful Sunday evening and join me next week. I think we're going to continue getting understanding the shadow self a little bit more because it's very, very deep and very important. So I hope you will join me for the next part in this talk. I hope you have a good night. Bye-bye.